Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's lecture, and we continue covering the tissue level of organization. This is the second video. So I covered most of this PowerPoint in my first video when I talk about the major tissue types and the epithelial tissue. So in this video lecture, we will cover the rest of the material. And we're going to start right here, uh, connective tissue, right? Let's go ahead and begin. So the major four types of uh, human tissues are epithelial, connective, muscle, and nervous tissue. So connective tissue, the basics. Now it's very um, diverse tissue and includes um, lots of different functions. Because if you see over here, connective tissue is your blood, all right? And what would function of your blood be? You uh, distribute uh, substances through your body, you deliver oxygen, and to your tissues, to your organs, you get rid of carbon dioxide waste product, right? Also connective tissue is your bone and cartilage that give you um, support and assist in the movement. Of course, you need muscles to move, but you need a connective tissue like your bones, <laughs> right? And you need uh, joints um, that made of um, cartilage, right? Some of the joints, not all of them, but, um, some joints made of cartilage and you need your bone also for movement. Uh, you also, um, the, uh, fun, the example of connective tissue would be your adipose tissues that store fat. So the function would be uh, storage of the um, triglyceride as a source of energy for future use, uh, cushioning, protection, um, right? So, um, Depends of uh, what type of tissue we're talking about, we will cover that function in more detail. Now, connective tissue has common embryonic origin. Uh, all um, connective tissue come from mesenchymal cells. So here, mesenchyme, uh, connective tissue, and it's divided into three uh, larger groups, connective tissue proper, fluid connective tissue, and supporting connective tissue. Then you divide each group into smaller subgroups. Connective tissue proper include loose and dense. And um, what it means, you will look at uh, fibers. Uh, fibers are proteins, and those fibers are not inside the cells, but in the extracellular matrix. So fibers outside the cells. And so if those, um, fibers or proteins create a loose open framework, then it's loose connective tissue proper. If fibers densely packed, then we have dense connective tissue proper. Fluid connective tissue also divided into two groups, uh, blood and lymph. Blood containing cardiovascular system, lymph in the lymphatic system, supporting connective tissues divided into cartilage and bone. Um, right, and they also have different uh, structure, different function, cartilage solid, rubbery mat matrix, and bone solid crystalline matrix. All right, so this is the uh, classification of connective tissue. Okay, so here we can see um, classification um, that um, goes even further, because if we divided connective tissue proper into loose and dense over here. Now they give you example of loose or subgroups of loose and subgroup sub subgroups of dense connective tissue. So loose connective tissue include uh, includes areolar, adipose, and reticulum, and dense connective tissue includes irregular, irregular, and elastic. So where we at? I will go back for a second. So loose, right? Then you can divide into three smaller groups. And then you can divide into three smaller groups, right? And three groups of loose going to be this one. Oops, sorry. Areolar, adipose, and reticular. And dense will be dense regular, dense regular, elastic, right? Then cartilage. Uh, can be divided into hyaline cartilage, elastic, and fiber cartilage, right? So if you go, for example, over here, you see your cartilage. So there is three types of cartilage in the human body. 
uh, hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibro cartilage. And bone can be compact or spongy. And they give you example over here of blood. I will always go wrong, right? So two types of bone tissue, compact and spongy, and uh, another type of um, connective tissue, fluid connective tissue is blood, right? Now, in general, connective tissue proper over here, right? It's, um, it has uh, cells, fibers, and ground substance. A ground substance will include organic and inorganic um, molecules found outside of cells. Now, cell, cell types, we have fibroblast, fibrocyte, adipocyte, mesenchymal cells, now, uh, fibroblast, um, the, the name blast telling you this is metabolically active cell and it's um, synthesized and secretes um, a lot of um, products. And what exactly this uh, cell secretes, you look um, to, the, to the front uh, part, the first part of the word. Now, this fibroblast secretes fibers, right? So fibers, uh, represented by those lines right over here. We will get to it. Fibrocyte, site means mature cell, like adipocytes, the cells that store uh, fat, and mesenchymal cells, um, those are um, over here that still can differentiate into um, different type of uh, cells. Uh, fibers, Extracellular fibers include collagen fibers, elastic and reticulum, and fibers and ground substance together make extracellular matrix. So let's look at diagram over here. So you see cells. Um, so this one, for example, is macrophage. This is our fibroblast. This is adipocyte. This is mesenchymal cell. Um, cells are uh, not uh, close to each other, right? They um, kind of apart. There is no uh, cellular connection between them. And because cells are not close to each other, there is a lot of extracellular space, right? So all this extracellular space will include water, of course, a ground substance. Um, so it's all, you know, different molecules and um, uh, you know, organic and organic in, in this extracellular fluid and fibers. Now, fibers are represented by these thick lines over here. Those are collagen fibers. Um, this um, thin fibers, and sometimes they look like little spirals. Those are elastic and short, highly branched fibers are reticular. So if it's connective tissue proper, uh, like areola connective tissue, for example, it will have all these three types of fibers in a approximately the same uh, proportion and the same amount, right? But over here, you can see histology slide. Again, you, you see a deeper side, fibrous side, of, uh, some of them will be fibroblast, mesenchymal cells, and um, lots of um, structure in between that is our extracellular matrix that include fibers and ground substance, right? So the first tissue is areolar tissue. So gel-like matrix with three fiber types. Uh, so it's a collagen, elastic, and a reticulum. Cells include fibroblast, macrophages, mast cells. Those are cells that secrete histamine, so in, that um, start inflammatory response. Some white blood cells. Uh, function wraps and cushions organs. Macrophages phagocytize bacteria, plays an important role in inflammation because we have mast cells over here, holds and conveys tissue fluids. Um, widely distributed under epithelia of body, uh, forms lamina propria of mucous membrane, packages organs around scapularis. So actually, the, uh, if you, you know, wanna describe one location, uh, then you look at your skin, 
right? The upper surface of your skin is made of epithelial tissue, but right under your epithelial tissue, we have areola. So areola tissue pretty much covers your entire body and it's part of your skin. Also, uh, your mucous membrane, and where is that? Well, this lots of mucous membrane is in your digestive tract and the respiratory tract, right? So, and mucous membrane is made of epithelial tissue and areola. So it's also cover your digestive tract, your respiratory tract, it surrounds your capillaries. So yeah, you can say it's widely distributed tissue found under epithelia of the body. Um, so this is a histology of the tissue. Um, that when we have our lab, we will uh, look at the slide and we will spend more time describing its structure. But those dark lines are collagen. Those um, thin and darker lines are elastic fibers and reticular fibers we cannot identify here on, on this um, uh, photomicrograph. Um, we also have... Um, Nuclear blast nuclei, right? So it, nuclear uh, fibroblasts, sorry, not nuclear blast, fibroblasts. So fibroblasts are those cells, fibroblasts that actually secrete all those fibers. And you cannot see a cell really, but there is a, a cell membrane and you know cytoplasm. But you see a darker part um, that stain darker is the nucleus. So the cell is fibroblast, but those dark parts you see, it's a nuclei of fibroblast. Uh, next type of uh, connective tissue proper, and it's also loose, uh, adipose. Matrix is um, areolar, but very sparse, uh, closely packed adipocytes of fat cells. So it's pretty much um, similar to areola, right? Matrix as in areolar. Uh, however, you have a large number of adipocytes, and those are cells that store fat or fat cells. They have nuclear, because, you know, this space, the white space over here is a vacuole, and inside this vacuole, you have droplets of fat. And because cells became so huge uh, when it's filled with fat, the cells are even touching each other, but there is really no junctions between cells, like in epithelial tissue. And because vacuole is so big, it pushes the um, nucleus uh, to the um, towards the cell membrane, right? So this is one cell adipocyte with the nucleus. Here's another adipocyte with the nucleus. And uh, you will have, again, fibroblast, and you will have uh, fibers, but way less extracellular matrix because most of the space occupied by those uh, adipocytes. Function, provides a reserve uh, food fuel, insulates against heat loss, supports and protects organs. And you will find it under skin, in the hypodermis, so we have epidermis, then uh, under your skin you have hypodermis that is mostly adipose tissue, around kidneys and eyeballs, within abdomen, in breast, right? Everywhere where you have this extra fatty uh, parts, right? But we have subcutaneous fat under the skin and we have visceral fat surrounding your internal organs, even your heart, uh, your uh, liver, you know, Pretty much uh, most of your internal organs will have some um, protection um, and they will be surrounded by some amount of visceral fat. Next one is a reticula. Um, so reticular connective tissue, network of reticular fibers. So reticular fibers are predominant. And a typical loose ground substance, reticular cells lie uh, on the network. So you can see those reticular cells that secrete those reticular fibers. And you'll have also a large amount of white blood cells in this tissue. Function, fibers form a soft internal skeleton or stroma that supports other cell types, including white blood cells, mast cells, and macrophages. Um, and this tissue, it's located in the lymphoid organs. 
so uh, like lymph nodes, bone marrow, and spleen. So this is a framework for lymphoid tissue. So it has um, lots of lymphocytes here and kind of like provides this network, right? So for example, spleen, that's the largest lymphoid organ. Now we are in a, let me go back so you guys uh, follow. Um, uh, you know, the <laughs> information. So we talking about connective tissue and we talk about loose, right? And uh, we cover areola, adipose and reticula. And now we are in dense connective tissue proper. Dense connective tissue proper and it's divided into regular, irregular and um, elastic, right? So this is dense, regular connective tissue. Example over here is a tendon. Now tendon connects muscles to your bones. So it's primary parallel collagen fibers, parallel collagen fibers, few elastic fibers, major cell type is fibroblast. Now those dark parts over here, again, those are nuclei or fibroblasts. So fibroblast will be you know, surrounding this nucleus. Those collagen fibers are not inside those cells. Those are outside the cell. Attaches muscles to bones or to muscles. Attaches bones to bones. Then we have ligaments. So we can have tendon or ligament. Ligament attached bone to bone. Uh, this tends great tensile stress when pulling force is applied in one direction. All right, so because fibers are parallel, it's really good uh, to uh, you know, protect your organs when you pull in one direction, right? That's called tensile stress. So location again, tendons, ligaments, aponeurosis. Aponeurosis is um, connective tissue. It's like a tendon, but it's a, instead of a rope-like, it's a sheet-like. Next is our dense irregular. Uh, primary irregular arrange, arrange collagen fibers. So now we have collagen fibers that are not in this nice parallel um, orientation. They pretty much oriented in different directions. Again, some elastic fibers and major cell type is fibroblast. So this is similar to dense regular. We have some elastic, we have major cell fibroblast. The difference is, uh, are those collagen fibers parallel to each other or not? Now, able to withstand tensile um, exerted in many directions. Now, if here we, we um, uh, withstand tensile force in one direction, and now here we uh, withstand ten tension uh, in uh, many directions and it provides structural strains. Now location is fibrous capsule of organs and joints. So we have joint and then we have a fibrous capsule surrounding it and dermis of the skin. So if you, and we will cover skin structure in our next chapter, but skin will include uh, epidermis that is made of epithelial tissue and then dermis is made of two parts. The uh, upper part, superficial part, not upper, superficial part of the dermis is areolar, and deep part of the dermis is dense irregular. So again, you have, uh, you see a fibroblast, nuclei fibroblast, you see collagen fibers. And um, this is dense um, um, connective tissue as well, but this one is elastic. So it's dense, regular connective tissue containing high proportion of elastic fibers. And because of that, it allows a recoil of tissue following stretching. So you stretch, you recoil. Um, maintains pulsatile flow of blood through arteries. So it's found in large arteries and it's allow it to kind of like stretch, recoil, and that allows this pulsatile flow. Aids um, passive recoil of lungs following inspiration. So in the organs, we don't have like, like organs that predominantly made of elastic, 
uh, fibers it just found within the organs. For example, walls of large arteries, right? Um, within certain ligaments associated with vertebral column, within the walls of the bronchial tubes. So anywhere when you need to stretch and recoil back, this would be a good tissue to, um, to make that organ from, right? So remember, we always look at the structure and function, right? And we know that this is, they complement each other, right? So again, it's found in the walls of large arteries, in a, um, bronchial tubes, in some ligaments. Right, so, and again, I'll go back um, to our um, diagram over here. So we talked about loose and dense connective tissue proper. Okay, so now we will talk about cartilage and bone and uh, we will end up um, covering blood as a last example of connective tissue. All right, so let's look at cartilage. So here we are in cartilage. So you have three types of cartilage. Hyaline cartilage is the most common. It's amorphous but firm matrix. Collagen fibers form an um, imperceptible network. Chondroblasts produce the matrix and when mature, they lie in the lacunae. Um, so what it tells you, now those are the cells, right? And those cells, um, they are uh, chondrocytes, right? So those chondrocytes, 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 and they surrounded by a pocket of fluid called lacuna, right? So lacuna uh, surrounding those mature cells and it has lots of fluid because cells must be surrounded by fluid. And this matrix in between, it's pretty rough, a tough matrix. Cells, you know, probably will die if they will be surrounded by tough matrix, right? So that's what it says. It's amorphous but firm matrix. We have lots of collagen fibers over here. Uh, chondroblasts produce that matrix, but when they become surrounding by it, we call them mature cells now, chondrocytes, and they within lacunae. Now the function would be support. Uh, it supports and reinforces, has a resilient cushioning properties and resist compressive stress. Now location would be most of the embryonic skeleton, covers the ends of long bones and joint cavities, forms costal cartilages of the ribs, cartilages of the nose, trachea, and larynx. So again, that's the most common cartilage. Uh, fiber, uh, I'm sorry, elastic cartilage first. So elastic cartilage is similar to hyaline cartilage, but has more elastic fibers in the matrix. So those dark uh, lines now are elastic cartilage. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, elastic fibers. Uh, and we do have collagen fibers. Like over here, we have um, collagen fibers. And here we have collagen and a large amount of elastic fibers. Um, that's a function changes slightly, so it maintains the shape of a structure while allowing great flexibility. And it's a limit, it has limited location. So you pretty much find it in your pinna or external ear and epiglottis. And epiglottis is a cartilage covering your larynx, right? So when you eat your food, uh, your food goes to, you know, your digestive system, um, right? To your, instead of going to your respiratory system. Uh, right, so that's uh, also we will have chondrocytes inside the lacuna, so it will be similar to high line with, um, with more elastic fibers. Now, fiber cartilage, oh, pretty much also limited distribution in, in the body, matrix similar, uh, but less firm than that in the high line cartilage. We have thick collagen fibers that are predominant. So now we have uh, thick collagen fibers and matrix is more flexible still compared with hyaline cartilage. Tensile strengths with the ability to absorb compressive shock and location uh, is in intervertebral disc between the vertebra 
pubic symphysis that connects your two hip bones uh, together on the anterior side and disc of knee joint. Uh, and you can see again, chondrocytes inside the lacuna and collagen fibers. So that's a fiber cartilage. Next bone. Bone is a supporting connective tissue. So it's in the same category as a cartilage. It has hard calcified matrix containing many collagen fibers. Osteocytes uh, lie in lacunae and very well vascularized. Now, if you look at a bone, uh, and we will talk about structure of a bone when we cover the uh, skeletal system, we will go in more details. But as, uh, right now, if you look at these dark uh, spots over here, those are actually cells. And those cells are osteocytes, right? Not chondrocytes, but osteocytes. Osteo means bone. And they also inside lacunae because matrix is very uh, hard, right? Uh, and lacuni contains a liquid, right? So the liquid surrounding cell. Now over here in the middle, we have what it's called central canal. And inside the central canal, you will find blood vessels and nerves. So the blood vessels run through here. Now blood brings oxygen, nutrients, right? To those cells. Now, how this uh, nutrients, how those nutrients and oxygen will move through this hard matrix? Well, for that reason, we have um, these cytoplasmic extensions. You see those lines; those called canaliculi. Um, so the nutrients and oxygen moves to the cells through these canaliculi. A waste product move back to a veins from the cells through these canaliculi. And then the whole structure remains you this big cir circle over here that called osteon. But again, we will talk about it in more details. Function, bone supports and protects, um, right? You support your organ, you protect your organ with a bone, like your, for example, your skull protects your brain, provides levers for the muscles to act on. That means muscles are attached to your bones and they move your bones and allow you to move your entire body. Also stores calcium and other minerals and fat. Marrow inside bones is the site of blood cell formation. So you have red bone marrow that is a site of hematopoiesis that is formation of blood cells and location tells you your bones. Uh, and blood. Blood is a fluid connective tissue. It contains uh, extracellular matrix, but now we call it plasma, right? So we have plasma that is 65% of the blood and then um, formed elements. We don't wanna call them cells because many of them are not complete cells. Uh, or they call themselves here, <laughs> right? Now they call them uh, formed elements. But we have red blood cells, so RBCs, so those smaller cells and more uh, numerous. So we have way more red blood cells compared to white blood cells. And white blood cells are bigger cells and usually have nuclei that uh, looks like weird, is a really huge or it has multiple lobes. And those little... Um, Fragments over here, those are platelets. So, so that's what it says, red and white cells in a fluid matrix that is called plasma. Transport of respiratory gases, nutrients, waste, and other substances, and location within your blood vessels. Okay, so, and the last uh, tissue, connective tissue we wanna br cover briefly is mesenchyme tissue. It's an embryonic connective tissue that gives rise to all other connective tissue, gel-like ground substance with fibers and star-shaped mesenchymal cells, right? So here the uh, slide, right? So cells look like little stars and matrix with um, fibers. Okay, so that was our connective tissue. And briefly, we're gonna cover two other groups. So let's go back over here. 
Here's our four tissue types, epithelial connective. We talk a little bit more about this type of uh, tissue types. Muscle and nervous tissue, we will cover briefly um, because in a, a chapter nervous system, we will get back to nervous tissue in a chapter of muscle, um, muscle tissue. We will have the whole chapter muscle tissue and the whole chapter nervous tissue. Right, so we will get back and talk more about this tissue type. So let's just finish up this um, lecture. So nervous tissue. The primary cells are neurons. They are branching cells. Um, cell processes that may be quite long extend from the nucleus containing cell body also contributing to nervous tissue and um, non-irritable supporting cells that are not illustrated over here, right? This is our illustration. So the nervous tissue is made of neurons. So those are large cells with long processes and processes can be axons or dendrites, right? Um, those are neurons. So it has the cell body and then um, like, uh, processes uh, that branching from the cell body, neuron processes. And then we have supporting cells. So what you see here, this is not extracellular matrix. Actually, this tissue has very small amount of extracellular matrix. But what we have surrounding those neurons are, first of all, those processes. There is millions of those processes, dendrites, axons, they all forming connection to each other, allow you to send electrical signals from one um, you know, uh, part of your body to another. But those cells surrounding neurons are glial cells or neuroglia. Right here, it says just supporting cells. Now function is transmit electrical signals from sensory receptors to the to your muscles and glands, and uh, also transmit motor commands from your nervous system. Um, you know, but that's kind of so. You what you do? Those cells they send sensory information towards your brain and spinal cord, and then your brain and spinal cord uses those cells to send. Um, to send directions or commands to your muscles and glands. And this will control activity of your muscles and your glands, and, you know, all your muscles uh, pretty much no, uh, that allow you to move your body or move substances within your body. Now, where do you find it? In the brain, spinal cord, nerves, and all these different receptors that um, found in um, many organs of your body. Muscle tissue. Now we have three types of muscle tissue. This one is skeletal muscles, long cylindrical multinucleated cells with obvious striation. So you see like this tube shape uh, structure. This is one individual cell. And because it's so long and thin, we call it muscle fiber. So over here, muscle cell, it's the same as muscle fiber. So it's not protein, it's entire cell. Now it's multinucleated. That means you have many nuclei within one cell. And those lines that goes up and down over here, those are also different type of proteins that give a cell this striated appearance. So that's called striated. Function, voluntary movement, locomotion. Voluntary means you can control it. Manipulation of environment. Oh, you can manipulate, right? You can pick up stuff, you can carry stuff around, you can break, you can build facial expression. And voluntary control, you decide when to move your skeletal muscles. Location in skeletal muscles attached to bones or to your skin. Uh, when we're talking about muscles or facial expressions, so you can smile or you can frown, those skeletal muscles will be attached to your skin and they will move your skin, but most skeletal muscles will move your bones. Um, this is cardiac muscle only found in the heart, in the wall of the heart. Branching, striated, generally uninucleated cells that 
um, interdenated at specialized functions, or junctions, sorry, is it called intercalated this? Interdigitate. Oh my goodness, what a word, huh? Interdigitate. That means connected, really. So, anyway, I think I mispronounced this <laughs> word myself, right? Um, Interdigitate. Ah, yeah, good word. So, let's see what's going on over here. Now, instead of um, this, um, you know, tube shape, long tubular structure, now we have cells they branch. See, like one branch goes here, one branch goes there. Those are very shorter cells. They're uninucleated, one nucleus per cell. And interdigitate, they're right here. So they connected to each other, you see? And where we have this connection, we call it intercalated disk. And, um, you know, this is the structure that allow um, ions to move directly from one cell to another cell. And basically, it's electrical impulse that moves directly from cell to cell. So we don't have this chemical synapse. This is called electrical synapse. We will talk more about it, about it right? But right now, we, when we see those dark lines that connects two myocytes together, then uh, we know we are talking about cardiac muscle. And you can see striations as well. So by the way, you see here, you can see better the cells are branching cells. Uh, function, as it contracts, it propels blood into the circulation, um, right? So your heart contract, uh, pumps your blood out uh, into your blood vessels, and then uh, your blood uh, moves through your entire body, delivering oxygen and nutrients to every cell of your body. Um, involuntary means you do not have control over uh, cardiac muscles. They controlled automatically by your autonomic nervous system. And there is only one location, walls of the heart. And the last muscle is smooth muscle. Now it's smooth because we don't have this striation. Um, so spindle-shaped cells with central nuclei, no striation, cells arranged closely to form sheets. All right, so you have you see nucleus inside each cell, uh, spindle shape of a cell, no striation. Propel substances or objects uh, like um, food stuff, urine, or even you know a baby uh, during childbirth uh, along internal passageways and it's involuntary control. So whenever you need to move, propel stuff uh, within your um, tube, uh, tubes or hollow organs. So actually like a uh, location here, mostly in the walls of hollow organs. So what does it mean a hollow organ? It means you have space inside or we call this space, um, you know, is a cavity or lumen. Right. So if you have space inside, then it will be a hollow organ like your stomach. Obviously, you have um, space where your chyme is, right? That's uh, your food. Or you have chyme inside this GI tract. And if you need to move it, propel it, then it would be nice to have muscles within those walls, right? Or urinary bladder, uh, uterus. So that's why location is in the walls of hollow organs. So again, uh, spindle shape, unicellular, no striation, involuntary. So again, you cannot consciously control it. It's controlled through your autonomic nervous system. Okay, so that's it for the second part of um, this chapter. I um, just wanna remind you that we were covering the cellular level of organization and this is the second video uh, where uh, we focused on connective tissue mostly and briefly covered nervous and muscle tissue. Okay, thank you for watching and I hope it was helpful.